Chapter 7 It's... It's Mother's clothing. I pulled out the long black cloak she always wore and peered inside the bag. And nothing else. I let the cloak drape my hands. But how and why? Falzar flew down and perched beside the bag. I admit, that is quite odd, Mara. But we don't know for certain that it's actually Mother's. It could be somebody else's. Quickly, put it back before whoever owns it comes looking for it. But that only made me want to study the cloak more. If it wasn't Mother's, perhaps it belonged to somebody who would become my new friend. Perhaps even hers and Falzar's as well. The very concept made my skin tingle and radiate heat until my whole body felt all nice and toasty. I turned the cloak over in my hands. No, here's the Falgrud family crest on the breast. The emerald color winked in a silver of sunlight that squeezed through the canopy above, and all the heat vacated my body. Oh well. Perhaps my new friend was still somewhere close by anyway. It's definitely hers. After all, Mother and I were the only Fulgrod family members left. The rest had all tragically perished in the war Lord Sycorath raged when he was attempting to gain control of Alandra, all their homes and belongings demolished as well. Mmm, Falzar said. I suppose that does appear to be the case. Very perplexing, then, I must admit. Indeed. Why would Mother stash her cloak in this bag and leave it in the middle of the mire? I mean, she wouldn't be off hunting gulags only wearing her underdress. Although the silly thought made me want to giggle, it simply doesn't make any sense. I wholeheartedly agree, Mara, but I say we leave them as they are, return to the cabin, and not ask Mother any questions about them. I am certain there is a logical explanation for it all, but asking will only tip her off to the fact that we left the cabin realm and make her extremely angry. And she's already angrier than she ever ought to be as it is. Don't you agree? I let that roll around in my head. But, but what about finding a new friend? What is that now? But as soon as I said it, I realized how utterly ridiculous it sounded. After all, Falzar and I would be putting ourselves in even more danger searching for somebody. Plus, who was to say that whoever we found, if anyone at all, would even want to be our friend in the first place. And then there was a simple matter that Mother would clearly be so furious with Falzar and me for leaving the cabin realm that she probably wouldn't even allow somebody else to cross the boundary, much less stay for a chat or a bowl of gulag stew, no matter how nice or friendly they appeared. I let out a long, weary sigh. Never mind. I suppose you're right, Falzar. Let's go. Of course I'm right. I placed Mother's cloak back into the bag and zipped it up and Falzar and I headed back to the cabin. The whole way, I couldn't help but feel horribly deflated. After all, Falzar's and my first real excursion out of the cabin realm in all my eleven years of life only created more questions. It didn't answer any, and it most certainly didn't gain me a new friend. I wished more than anything I could know what was going on, what Mother was lying about or covering up, if anything. That dark blue bag with her clothes was just too strange, eerie even. There was just no doubt about it. There was something incredibly off here. I just knew it. When we got back to the safe haven of the cabin realm, I laid down in the yard for my daily morning nap, resting my head on the log. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't fall asleep. I couldn't get all the new, nagging questions out of my head. I can tell you're not sleeping, Falzar said from somewhere high above me. I opened my eyes. Yes, I'm just thinking? Right. Falzar chuckled. Seems to be the big thing with you these days, eh? Or perhaps I should say the big flaw. I sat up straight, leaning my back against the log. I just don't get it, Falzar. I mean, I'm eleven years old now, for Alondra's sake. Sure, I'm still a little girl, but I'm not that little anymore. I mean, I feel like I should know, and should be able to know more about the world, don't you? And more people, too, of course. I mean, it seems Mother is hiding things from me. From us. Or she's wrong about certain things, and it's just so... infuriating. Falzar swooped down and perched on my shoulder. Mara, calm down. I know some things have been a tad suspicious as of late, but you know Mother is just looking out for you. She wants what's best for you. For both of us, and all of Elandra, for that matter. So please try to calm down. Ugh, why did he have to be so logical? 
Still, I couldn't fight that fishy, needling feeling weaving through my gut, becoming part of its cloth. As these thoughts brewed in my brain, Mother pushed between two trees with gold X's on them at the edge of the cabin realm, wearing her black cloak and carrying her gulag skin bag as usual. Had she just retrieved the cloak from the sack in the mire and put it on? I was absolutely dying to know. But one look at her deep scarlet face, her dragon tooth sharp gaze threatening to impale both mine and Falzar's, I knew we were in big trouble. Like huge trouble. Because I knew she knew we had been outside the cabin realm. Or at least that I had. All my muscles grew tense, a large knot clenching hard in my stomach. Mother? Mara? Mother, please listen. I cannot believe you, young lady. I simply cannot believe it. She strode up to me and plopped her gulag skin bag to the ground. I just retrieved my cloak from my bag in the mire, and I saw that it was not carefully folded like how I left it. Oh, Gulak crud. That was true. I had just sort of eased the cloak back into the bag. I had completely forgotten it had been folded in the first place. She strapped her arms across her chest, still impaling me with her gaze. You deliberately disobeyed me yet again, and left the one place you're safe from the utterly horrific terrors of the outside world. The one place your beloved father created as to protect all of us and the entire future of Alandra due to your incredibly important magical destiny. Well, obviously Father hadn't built the cabin realm to protect Falzar since he hadn't even been around then, but I wasn't about to make light of that. Well, yes, Mother, but... My mind reeled, struggling to find some kind of excuse or at least something to try to calm her down, but I couldn't latch onto a single thing. What an utterly wretched... Selfish young lady you have become, Mara O'Shear Fulgrad. Utterly wretched and selfish. Why, your father would be deeply ashamed and disappointed were he here today. Not only are you once again banished straight to bed without lunch or dinner, but you are now forbidden to leave the cabin itself forever, or uh, until you are of age. What? I practically squawk like fowls are. No, mother, you can't. To your room, young lady. Right this instant. I don't want to hear another word. This is what you have driven me to. Now go. I stood from the log. Fowls are still perched on my shoulder and scurried into the cabin and up to the loft, my eyes stinging the whole way. I lay down on my cot, and fowls are nuzzled beside me under the cover before the tears came full force. It was bad enough I angered Mother to the point I wasn't even allowed to leave the cabin, but the most awful of all was how she said Father would be so ashamed and disappointed with me. I always thought he'd be so proud of me, especially when I finally defeated Lord Sycorath once and for all when I was eighteen. I mean, would Father really hate me for breaking the rules of the cabin realm? Would he really hate me for being curious because of some of the odd, conflicting things I saw and what Mother said about Alondra and my magical destiny? Would he really hate me for wishing I could leave the cabin realm to simply meet someone new and possibly make a friend? I mean, Falzar was great and all, but it was so horrifically lonely being confined in the cabin realm with just him all day, every day. Suddenly, my tears dried up. No. No father wouldn't. I was absolutely certain of it. Despite all the terrifying things Mother just said, I couldn't help but still feel like something was off like I was onto something. She refused to tell me the truth, whatever it was, and there was no denying that. She was hiding something, something big, maybe even a lot of somethings, and I swore to all the great and powerful wizards of Alondra to ever live that I was going to find out exactly what they were, and maybe even make a new friend along the way, just as soon as the sun shed itself on this cold, cruel world tomorrow morning.